fail. So great to see ma so many happy hackers here. Um, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the sensor lab. It's a small project we had at Mongosoup um, where we did a similar thing you do today. We plugged in some sensors and analyzed the data afterwards. And yeah, we did it with MongoDB, so I think it fits quite well to the task you do today. Yeah, MongoSoup this is a company I work for. Um, um, we host MongoDB in the cloud and deliver some services around it. <coughs> so, what was our setup? I don't know the setup you have today here, but um, yeah. We just bought a Raspberry and uh, plugged in um, Tinkerforge sensors. This was mainly uh, motion sensor, sound intensity, temperature and multi-touch sensor. So um, the idea was to have um, different kind of data sources. Um, the motion and multi-touch sensors were some kind of event data. So if you move, um, yeah, besides the motion sensor, it, it gets an event which is written into the database. And the sound and uh, temperature sensors did deliver streaming, streaming data. So co a constant stream of data into the database. So it's two different type of, type of um, data <coughs> um, we analyzed. And um, yeah, on the right screen you see the setup. It's just in our office. So um, it's, um, the motion sensor detects if someone um, goes into the kitchen um, or to the toilet. So, um, and there are, there's a temperature and sound intensity sensor um, on the right side. So the sound intensity just um, yeah, records how loud it's in the kitchen. Or, um, and we had the touch sensors on the coffee machine and the fridge. So if someone gets a coffee, there's an event for coffee. And if someone opens, opens the fridge, there's an event for fridge. Um, software we built was based on Python. Um, as Tinkerforge, with their sensors, delivered an API um, which we could um, deploy on the Raspberry. Um, also, we used Flask as best web framework for Python and PyMongo as API for MongoDB. And the MongoDB was hosted with MongoSoup um, in the cloud at uh, Amazon. Um, yeah, additionally, the application was deployed on Heroku which is quite nice that we can um, have MongoSoup as add-on in Heroku, so we have the application deployed and managed on Heroku and have a direct link to our, our database. Um, the visualization was done with D3 and the web framework around it, um, and we did some analytics in R. So, know a little bit about the hard stuff. Um, maybe you are interested in, so we, as I told you, we choose two types of sensor data. Um, we have this event data, um, which is very sparse, and um, a time series data, which, which is from the temperature, a continuous stream of data, um, and which uses the data model, um, which was proposed by MongoDB on their website. Um, it's the kind of nested document structure that you have a document for one hour and inside of the document a sub-document for every minute. So you have 60 sub-documents for one hour and inside of the minute document you have again 50, uh, 60 sub-documents for every second. And yeah, we choose a resolution of um, tens of seconds. So we have inside one second we have um, 10 values. Um, with our streaming data. Um, so this model fits um, for this frequent data and it can, you can access directly every tenth of a second with one query um, very easily and update um, inside of the document very easily as I show in the next slide. So does anyone know this kind of model? Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> okay. So um, you can have, you can just Google time series data MongoDB, and you will directly 
see the blog post about it. So how um, are the sensor data written into the MongoDB? Um, the buff screenshot is um, yeah, how, the, how the connection with Tinkerforge API is, um, is done. It's not so interesting, maybe. And below you see the update mes method. So what we do is uh, some kind of pre-allocation. So we create an empty document before in the first step for the whole hour. And then we can just set the value inside of the document um, in a single step. And um, yeah, due to this pre-allocation, um, the disk space is handled nicely with uh, MongoDB. And um, yeah, you have nice update methods, which, which are quite fast. So you get the minute second and tenth of a second and just build the, the string and iterate through these uh, sub-documents. Okay, then we have this event data, so for very sparse and sporadic data. Um, we don't want to have a document with 360,000 values, which default values, um, which are, and we, we create only <coughs> maybe 10, 10 events in an hour, so we need only 10, um, 10 data points. So we created for this event mo um, data another model, it's, it's called bucket model in our, we call it a bucket model. So we have buckets with size of 10, which can have 10 values inside. And every time we get an event, we write it into this bucket. And when the bucket is full, we pre-allocate the next bucket and write the next 10 events again in the next bucket. And records start and end time for every bucket. Um, and for this motion events, for example, it's, um, they have a certain length, so the motion um, takes some time and we write the length as a value inside of, of um, each bucket. Okay, so this is a better fit for the sparse data as, as the original time series data. Um, yeah, and to write into um, these buckets, um, you, you get the bucket for a certain time stamp, or the, the next pre allocated bucket, you keep it in, in memory, and then you get the next value which is not, which doesn't um, contain a defined value. Um, so we have this, this default value start zero, next minus one, and zero. So you search in your bucket for the next undefined value, and then you set this value to the value re you recorded. Um, this is quite nice routine or update method in MongoDB. Okay, and to read, it's the same, nearly the same for stream and event data. You search for documents which are in a certain timestamp, time span you search, and um, after you, you got all your docu doc documents which match your query, you iterate in memory in Python, for our case, um, through the result set and um, filter values you don't need or ag aggregate, and so on. So the aggregation was not done in MongoDB because, um, yeah, it, in our case, it was even more easy to do it in, in Python. And we compared this um, different yeah, data models um, for the data size they have in MongoDB. And a little bit surprising for us was that the data model was um, nested document structure, so for our minute, seconds, and tens of seconds, um, has a, the, um, less um, space con was less space consuming uh, compared to um, a plain array just of values. So if you, if you have just a, an array of 360,000 values, it, it consumes more space on disk than this nested document structure. Um, and yeah, the first time we were a little bit surprised, but then we reala realized that arrays are not handled in Bison when it's stored um, on disk. Um, so in fact, MongoDB um, generates keys for every value in the array. So you have, in fact, key value pairs for every ent entry in an array. 
and this is the reason that the disk space was um, yeah, more, more space consuming for this array data model. Okay, here are some facts we um, get out of these two different models. Um, yeah, in fact, this for the event data, the bucket model still is a better still is a better fit because you don't know you don't have data points for every second. Or so you should choose just a small array if you if you want to to store event data, just an array of 10 elements or 100 elements, and then it's okay, then you can, mm. the, the overhead of the keys is not so big that, that you should choose another data model. And for the stream data, of course, it's this um, nested document structure is a perfect fit. Okay, then we did some analytics on the event data. Uh, or here in the streaming data, it's the temperature. So above you see just the observed um, temperature. And um, then we did some kind of ARIMA analysis um, in R. And yeah, and so in, in the second um, diagram, you, you see the trend, the temperature rises. This is just a smoothing of, of the observed values. And then you have um, a seasonal component, so this, this is every day. Um, so in the morning, the temperature rises and falls during the night. Um, and you, when you sub subtract the trend and the seasonal data from the observed data, you get some noise or random um, values, which is the remaining unexplained um, rest of, of your data. So you see to the right side of, of the graph, the temperature rises, um, which could not be explained by the, mo the model and um, the noise um, rises also. Okay, um, maybe for you the most interesting, we did some visualization with D3 and Rickshaw. Um, and I can show you a small demo. So, here we have um, yeah, a dashboard. Um, this is the real applica application as deployed to Heroku. Um, and I can now sh switch on some data points. <coughs> so we have here the coffee and the fridge and the motion data. So these are, this, is, this is the event data. We re, um, displayed this um, dots here and in the, another from uh, above. <coughs> and the interesting maybe is the temperature and sound data. So here you have some sound peaks of sound intensity. The temperature data doesn't change so much during the day because the temperature is, was constant. And um, yeah, <laughs> so I think this rickshaw, this visualization was quite nice to have different um, data sources displayed in in one dashboard. So this was just a prototype, just the first try to visualize all this data in, in one dashboard. And um, yeah, in our opinion, it fits quite well for this time series data. So maybe it's a try first for you to to try a rickshaw today. Um, to <coughs> okay, so this was my short talk today. I hope it was interesting for you. And if you have questions, please. Um, we didn't measure uh, how much we can do in a second, but I know from another setting that we could do 8,000 per um, second. Yeah. Yeah. For this bucket model.
Okay. Okay. So, happy hacking. Yeah.